Hello YouTube. This video it will be a follow-up to my Urantia book review video. I've read a little bit more now um, going in and when I look back at that video there were a few things I neglected to mention. A little bit more about um, what the Urantia book is and uh, but more importantly why I said it's the best religion I've come across. So first what the book is about. You might wonder what the word Urantia means. Well Urantia basically mean is an alternative name for planet Earth. Urantia is the name given by the celestials, the angels in heaven for our planet. And what the book, as for what the book is about, I said, I, I said, I said what it was about in my previous video, but I think I uh, neglected to mention a little bit more about how it's structured. So the first two parts, um, there's astronomy involved, and there's a detailed description of what the world's hereafter will be. It's not just heaven and or paradise. It's various incarnations inward toward God. That's uh, so it's not just heaven. It's a description of the cosmos and the worlds hereafter, after this earthly life. The first two parts, the third part of the book is a history of Urantia, the history of Earth. Now, in the history of Earth, there's a lot of the, where there's the most science in it, where there's the most description of science. A lot of the science is true. Some of it is flawed, but it's also mixed in with a little bit of mythology. Um, I don't believe everything. I don't believe everything the Urantia book says, which I will get back to later. More on that later. Um... And the fourth part is the closest the book takes in the form of a novel, which is the life and teachings of Jesus, but not the traditional Jesus of the Bible, the four Gospels. This one has a more detailed, um, more comprehensive uh, story of his life and his teachings. So... And so, and, and, uh, so it, uh, the Urantia book um, confirms or debunks a lot of what the four Gospels say about Jesus. So that's how the book is structured. I should have mentioned that. Um, there's one more note I have, I have to say is that this in, uh, there is some uh, material in the book on race and eugenics, which is very, very controversial. Um, for some people, it might seem racist. For me, it was meh, not so offensive. You have to approach it with an open mind and you have to think long and hard about it when you read it. Um, now, I did say... I wanted to talk about why I read the Urantia book and why it's the best form of religion, in my opinion. So the Urantia book, the beauty about it is the authors and the people who encourage who read the book will tell you is you don't have to believe everything the book says in fa on face value immediately. The book is here. It was originally written, whether by celestials or human beings, to help people have a better relationship with God, a, um, expand their awareness. It's to help someone have a personal experience. It is not a law book. It is not a book that demands uh, obedience to its teachings or suffer eternal damnation. So just to make that clear, it's not, a, it's not a law book. It's a book to assist someone in, uh, in having a spiritual 
um, experience and greater knowledge. And it's supposed and so book is the book is mainly designed because it has it elevates Christianity somewhat is to help Christians who go to church and have a lot of unanswered questions and have a lot of skepticism. They say, well, what about this or what about this? This doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Well, this book helps to clarify their uh um helps to clarify a lot of unanswerable questions regarding Christianity where while maintaining a um a theology a um spiritual belief system now there's no religious institution or church or organization involved in the belief in the teachings of the of the Urantia book. There's only the publishing company. There's only the foundation that helps publish the book and um, helps raise awareness of the book's existence and also assists in people in getting together to discuss common interest, uh, shared interest in the book. But there is no religious clergy, there is no religious authorities in it. And there is no organ. Uh, yeah. And so the book doesn't demand that you have to believe in its teachings in order to achieve salvation. No. In fact, it encourages you to continue within the religion of your choice or religion of your uh, of your birth with an expanded knowledge and take what's the take the best teachings out of each religion and everything else that is um, false or everything that is false will eventually fall away like homophobia for example so that's what the book te- that's how what the book teaches it doesn't how do i put this yeah it's it's very difficult so it doesn't demand that you be baptized and become a member of an organization in order to achieve salvation or even to have a spiritual experience it doesn't demand you embrace one uniform belief system It's a book that gives you assurance that you will have eternal life without without imposing on your mind what you have to what you can and cannot believe. So that's why that's why I don't have to believe everything the book says. I don't have to believe everything the book says. The only thing that I that it encourages me to do is to have my own experience. Is to try to develop the relationship with the higher power. This, the teachings of this book don't um, condemn anyone. It gives reassurance. And it doesn't say there is one true religion. There is no one true church. A lot of Christ, a lot of uh, religious people will take issue with that, but but that's not my, that's not my problem. It just gives reassurance to anyone who reads the book. Okay, I I, I think I'm getting very repetitive here. Anyway, I that's what I wanted to tell you all why I read the Arantia book and why it is the best theological system I have come across in my, all of my studies of the world religions. So, no um, no temple worship, no going to a building to congregate. It's just to have a personal experience, and I forgot to mention, to live that spiritual life. Not get together in a church and have a spiritual experience once or twice a week, but to live that life 
to live that life by just living and loving all. Loving all. That's the basic teaching of the book. Okay. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Um, like, share, and subscribe.